I'm super frothing. We are starting work on our very first wine cellars. First time for us, and these things are gonna be super fancy. And do you know what the perfect pairing is for a wine cellar? Bit of cheese, bit of crackers. <laughs> An amazing helical staircase. Let's go. With our designs and our layout, we always want it to be functional, purposeful, but beautiful as well. And these beautiful wine rooms sort of lead you down into the living area. And this space was originally a laundry and a bathroom and we've rejigged it because we knew that would be such an amazing feature. And I was more thinking the aesthetics. I didn't really realise how technical a wine cellar would be. A lot of work has gone into these to say the least. So essentially this space here is, we're building a fridge. So the fridge unit's in the ceiling, loud for that, we've got our insulated panels which will get them clad with stone and then we're going to fill this joint up with some wine. And then we're going to have um, steel and glass doors here but they can't be any old glass. Has to be thermal glass because what you don't want is any condensation dripping down the face of the glass and you know creating like wet all over the floor so the thermal glass will regulate that temperature and keep it dry and the inside will be kept cool. As with most projects, the builder always wears many different hats and one of the ones I'm gonna lean into once this build is almost complete is wine tasting and being a sommelier. 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 <laughs> Spin it, sniff it, sip it. I don't really know what that is. All your wine advice just comes straight <laughs> in. I'm your guy. Carl can do whatever he wants in this lifetime as long as you finish this build and get some stairs in, please. I can handle that. Essentially, we have started where the starting point is and we've flown up here and either the, the landing hasn't been made correctly or our starting point should have been twisted around to one stair. So... Because we've got a missing step, do we, basically, at this point? Essentially, we've got a missing step, but if we, if we start one more over, the whole lot can go around and connect. It's a minor step back. <laughs> We're just like missing one step by about this much. Do you reckon the new buyer would notice? <laughs> <laughs> it's just got to jump from that last step up to the landing. Like it could be a cool feature. No one's ever done that before. <laughs> I think I'm just going to make the executive decision. Take it all down and do it again. Let's go. It's not going to take long. I've done it before. So this is not the first time that this has happened. Well, look, you just have to be ready for the goalposts to move, or if you want to move the staircase over like 100 <laughs> mil, just take it down and move it over another 100 mil. As frustrating as this has been, we just can't sit and dwell on it. We have so much to do, got to get going. I'm a big fan of a statement powder room and these two powder rooms are going to make a statement in a completely different way. So in house one, we have this light coloured tile from Beaumont's and we're pairing that with this featured Decton. This is going to be our integrated basin. I'm going to run mirror below and above this so it's going to appear as it's floating. We have a beautiful pendant that goes over the top of this and that will pair beautifully with this gorgeous champagne tapware. In complete contrast to that, in house two, we have this dark feature Hawaiian rock salt tile from Beaumont's and we're really playing on the colours in here. We have this Nuco clay basin and that will sit on a matte black frame. Styling wise in here we're using the copper tapware and I'll be styling with these beautiful copper accents. I've kept the colour palette of the rear bedrooms quite neutral and I'm bringing in the personality with the styling. So in house one I have this amazing coastal artwork and I'm drawing out the blues in this and styling the bed with these soft linens and the striking blues. In contrast to that, in house two, I'm using these gorgeous brown tones, layering the bed with this and some amazing handmade ceramics. I'm actually really excited about this bedroom. The main reason for that is both these back bedrooms have this outdoor garden 
you can't get out there, so that's going to be really heavily planted. It's going to block out all the neighbours. When you walk in, you're going to have this fresh, green, beautiful wall to look at. Mm, it's going to be pretty nice. In these two bedrooms on this house one, we've gone with the Concerto Gibrock Corners, which adds that nice effect and it's going to tie in really well to the other decorative trends. I love adding in a decorative cornice because it helps to tell the story of a room and it is quite subtle but it's all those different layers that help to create a beautiful room. So in house one, a bit more formal and in house two, again, it's a little bit more relaxed and it helps to tell the story of the resort vibe. Uh, I need to choose a paint colour, get some beautiful blinds and curtains for these windows. Uh, we need to work out what's going on this bed head. This will have a queen bed here with wall lights by the side. And wardrobes done. Shut the door. Done, shut the door. Easy. With these rear bedrooms, they are facing west and we had originally planned to have a deck out the back but we decided that would just be underused, so we scrapped it. We've gone with beautiful big garden beds. I think a garden is a great way to screen out that western sun, and I love the selection of plants we're thinking of using. I think in years to come, that would just be a beautiful green wall to look out on. Even the smaller spaces, we have considered every single little detail in these homes. And these are not big powder rooms, but they are definitely going to pack a punch. All right, so the downstairs powder room is coming along. We've got the Gyprock Aqua Check, which we've used in all of our wet areas. It's designed for that. So it's good to see this space, like, you know, get filled in and come to life. This is an exciting space because we have these two big features outside this room. And obviously, a, you know, a powder room is not something that you would normally want to highlight, particularly the toilet. But here we have this beautiful wall and we're going to put mirror down to the vanity and mirror below as well. So you're sort of going to capture the reflection as you walk past these two features outside the room. And this vanity is going to be a beautiful piece of Decton in a real feature um, finish. So it's, and then we've got this beautiful pendant that comes down here as well. So I feel like it's going to be a beautiful room that you'll really want to walk past and lead yourself into. The wine cellars are coming along nicely. Gary is installing the stern at a rapid rate. Well, it's not that rapid because it <laughs> takes forever to put on the wall, but it's happening and that's the main thing. I love that with this stone, we've used it at the entryway in the cellar and at the back of the property. And it's such a nice way to lead you through each space and connect and help to fill the flow. We're on to the next stage with our stairs. We're doing our plaster base. And then after that, it'll be micro cement. Early on, Kyle and I made the decision to go with black window frames from Wideline, and now seeing the wine rooms come together, it's all starting to make sense. Especially now that we've installed that massive five metre tall window, we're really seeing the link between the external frames and the wine rooms. I just can't wait to see all that natural light flooding in on the staircase, the wine rooms, it's all happening. These stairs are seriously a work of art. So much effort, time, resources goes into these. And today what I'm gonna do is glue our way down and clad it in the timber that we've selected for the whole house. So Beaumont Tiles have made us these stair nosings. They are epic because they literally go straight on like that and they create like a beautiful seamless look. So I'm pumped to get these in. It means we can start using the stairs properly and I'm one step closer to the end product. I'm really happy with the mid-tone colour that we have chosen for these stairs. It works beautifully with house one, lighter scheme, and it also works beautifully with the darker scheme of house two. The internal garden bed sits underneath the helical staircase, and that is right next to an external garden bed, and it gives the illusion that it's all connected. I love that it's another way to bring the outdoors in, and it was actually Matt Lacey's idea to have that internal garden bed, so it's awesome to have him back for planting. There's a massive sense of accomplishment now that we've completed some of these standout features of the home. Everything is starting to look phenomenal. A 
As you enter each home, you are drawn straight to the wine cellars. They have this beautiful stone, it's backlit, it's well stocked, and we have this gorgeous glass and steel feature. One of the most sculptural elements to this build is this amazing staircase. As it sweeps around that internal garden bed, it's perfectly framed within that wide line atrium window and flooded with natural light. The staircases in each house are finished with a beautiful micro cement and to differentiate the two houses we have that lighter finish in house one and in house two a slightly darker finish. I loved bringing these powder rooms together because they both have such unique personalities. In house one it's light, it's sleek and it's sophisticated. We have the beautiful rock salt tiles from Beaumont's, the micro cement, and the hero for me really is the Decton Integrated Basin. And having the mirrors go from floor to ceiling gives the illusion that the basin is actually floating. We've used the same Decton at the back of the toilet and that finish works really beautifully with the champagne tapware we have. And functionally, I think this is a really cool powder room. It flows on from outside internally, so I can imagine someone coming back from a surf and really getting some good use out of this bathroom. This bathroom has a real moody feel to it with the aged brass wall light and the irregular shaped mirror. The red Nude Co Basin sitting on that black steel frame ties in perfectly with those wall tiles. Bedroom 3 of House 1 has a light and bright colour palette. I've used Torbman's Twiggy on the walls and Island Coconut on the door. The queen bed is framed up against a feature wall, clad with concave panelling and capped with beautiful natural stone. A beautiful feature of this room is the gorgeous May clay wall lights. They are so petite and they suit that French vibe of House 1 perfectly. There's a lot of natural light in this bedroom, so for the window above the bed we've framed with a beautiful soft Roman blind and for the big window we have a block out blind covered with some soft shears from DIY blinds. I can imagine for the most part when you're in this room you'd want these open so you can look out over the beautiful garden. Over in house two we have an identical layout but the colour palette is slightly warmer, we've used Torbman sizal rope on the walls. For our stone cap in this bedroom, we've used the Sensor Stone Vancouver, which is a great link to the downstairs living areas. These bedrooms are all about texture and the finishes, from the symphony cornice down to the scallop wall cladding and the way that Kara's styled these beds. Coming up next on Bay Builds, it's all about statement entryways. We have floor to ceiling voids, oversized arch windows. The most epic stone we've ever done and we reveal some awesome media rooms. Like and subscribe so you don't miss out.